Hey there folks, welcome back to my waking nightmare. Um, I've got some Xbox 360 controllers that I want to see about fixing. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss more, a little bit about what's going on with these three. Um, the goal is to fix this one, but if I've got extra time, maybe we'll fix these two too. Um, also depending on how the parts work out. Um, this one is totally fine, it just needs cosmetic sticks, so probably do that one off camera. Uh, but these two have the same issue, though this one is quite a bit worse. Uh, so we'll start with this one here. Uh, so what's going on? Let me get my tester here. I've got an official Microsoft dongle here wired up to my phone with the gamepad tester. And um, I've already got this paired to my controller or to my receiver. Just gotta switch it on. Um, it's an old battery mod. We, we, we don't we don't discuss that. Uh, but controller boots right up. It connects. You can see nearly everything's working. Um, you know, I have all my buttons up, down, left, right, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I guess the guide button doesn't show up in here. Um, but the problem is with both of the sticks here. So as you can see, hopefully. Uh, the left stick is not returning to top dead center. Um, that is a very big problem with these controllers. Every single one I have is like this. Uh, this one isn't even as bad as my silver controller. But the problem is with the right stick. You see, it only goes up and down. I, I only have... <laughs> The, the one direction. I can't go left and right on it anymore. Uh, for whatever reason, one of the potentiometers on this thing is just dead. Um, and so I need to replace that. I don't know if the stick itself needs replacement. Um, it certainly feels fine mechanically, uh, and it looks to be relatively centered compared to the left one. But uh, we'll see about that. Um, one of my biggest problems with these controllers, like, I just, I, I sincerely don't like this, is how loose they are, how much backlash there is in the mechanism. It's incredibly frustrating to use in games that aren't calibrated for these controllers. So you can see, I'm just barely touching it. You can see how much wiggle this stick has. And you can see, if you're looking at my, um, tester in the background, you can see that just this little bit of wiggle is registering movement within the stick. Uh, so the problem that I have, ignoring the right stick, if I were to just use this controller on just about any modern game, um, this is usually movement. Uh, my character avatar or whatever it is, is almost always stuck moving forward and it's incredibly frustrating. Now, the solution to this is, of course, to just get a better controller. <laughs> um, and quite frankly, that's what I do when I play games. I actually use this one. Um, it's so much better. The, the Xbox One controller is no joke. Uh, but, um, I mean, I still have a bunch of these controllers, and this one in particular is sentimental. So I'd prefer to fix it if I can. So let me go ahead and get that switched off. I'm gonna set this aside. And uh, let's get this torn down. Uh, so these things come apart with a Torx T8 security driver. Um, though in my particular case, with this specific controller, I did that thing that um, I'm a little bit ashamed to admit these days, but at the time I didn't have the right screwdriver, so I broke the security post off of all these screws, and I don't need security bits to take it apart, but it is what it is. I'd recommend just getting a screwdriver that has security bits. Uh, it is missing two screws. One of them is behind the battery mod. I just never installed it because the battery mod was in the way. And the other has a broken screw post, so in my case, there's normally seven. I only need to remove five. And uh, before I go any further, I guess I'll talk a little bit about this battery mod. Um, it is just a T8 
TP4056 in here and there's a USB type C connector on the bottom for charging. It works shockingly well for what it is. Um, I sincerely do not recommend doing something like this because this is not the proper way to do it. Um, but I also did it like 10 years ago and it's still working. So I'm just gonna leave it alone for now. Uh, this specific controller, I think I have had since like 2006. <laughs> Internally, it's all stock. Um, there's just a diode going from the output of the TP4056 into the input of the battery connector. Uh, had I known at the time what I know now, I probably would have put a little bit more effort into using the controller's built-in battery management circuits, but, you know, I, I was young and ignorant and didn't realize that was a thing. Um, these controllers have built-in nickel metal hydride battery management circuitry. Um, oh, come on. And it shouldn't be too much effort to hijack that. I just didn't. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside for now. We won't need this. Just this. I wish I could disconnect this, but in my ignorance, I never put a uh, connector on here. Um, ah, so my potentiometer is not dead. It's just not spinning. This, this potentiometer looks to be free spinning. Um, that's frustrating. The mechanical action of it feels good, but whatever. Okay, so here is the star of the show. I found these on AliExpress after much research. Um, I have no idea how good they are. I have been burned so many times with these stupid aftermarket sticks. It's not even funny, but I can't find OEM sticks for these controllers anymore. They stopped making them quite a while ago. These stick boxes are 16 millimeter, I think. I've got calipers right here. I could just measure it. Um, yeah, 16 millimeters. Uh, I believe the Xbox One stick boxes are like 14 millimeters or 13 millimeters or something. So they're, they're physically smaller. They do not fit with Xbox 360 controllers, which is a damn shame because this is a perfectly cromulent controller. It works totally fine aside from my uh, stick uh. stick issue. Um, but you know, this is a perfectly good controller. Might as well keep using it if I can. Uh, so I'm gonna replace both stick boxes. Um, to do this one, I need to remove the That got a little melty. Um, I need to remove the... Trigger. Why don't I move the melty thing from next to my soldering iron stand? And then I won't accidentally melt anything. How about that? I have done this particular controller. I think this is the fourth time I've put new sticks in it. Uh, the aftermarket sticks just really don't last that long. And I am genuinely impressed that I haven't totally destroyed it. You can see the last time I did this, my soldering ability kind of kind of sucked. Uh, those are terrible joints. But credit where credit is due. <laughs> um, the last controller I did uh, was an Xbox One controller, and it was like three months ago? and I made a mess of it. But I'm gonna blame my tool, even though it's my fault for not maintaining my tool properly. Okay, I guess I can't get that yet.
Holy cow, this thing is so much easier than uh, the way I used to do this. Oh, I forgot to turn on my regular iron. Whatever, might as well suck the other one off. I think I can just bend that out of the way. Yeah. Oh, that one's so much better. Even the solder sucker performs so much better when you properly maintain it. All right, this one's total garbage. I was thinking about making an adapter board for these things so that you can use a modern, newly available stick of name brand. Uh, but whether I put in that effort has yet to be determined. It's gonna depend, I think, a little bit on uh, how well these sticks actually work. I'm gonna do two corners. Get under here and make sure that's flush to the board. It's nice and straight. up my solder chemistries. Let's just fix both these, huh? That do not want to melt. User error. Just kidding. Okay, okay. Let's try that again. Noise, 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 noise. I have actually messed up one of these pads. That mounting point is missing half the ring around it. Oops. And I accidentally knocked off a capacitor when I was desoldering. 
it is still exactly where it needs to be. And conveniently just centered itself. So, oh. right up until I took it clean off the board. Hmm. You know what? That thing's dead. It's only got one pad on it. Uh, hopefully it's not important. <laughs> oh, I didn't actually finish this. I only did the corners. All right, so ideally, you only want to replace the mechanical stick box itself and not the potentiometers attached to it. Um, but, like I said, I have serviced this controller several times. I did not know that the first few times. Those stick boxes and subsequent potentiometers are long gone. A little too late. So we're gonna see how this one fares with the um, uh, potentiometers it comes with. See, I didn't know this at the time, but I know this now. I'm not 100% sure how much this applies to Xbox 360 controllers, but I know it's a thing for Xbox One. I'm assuming it's the same for 360 based off my experience here. Um, from the factory, these sticks are calibrated. Oh, come on. So no potentiometer is ever perfect. I can't get that one to go. No potentiometer is perfect, you know, they, they don't they don't center quite right. So to work around that. Um, the center is just set in software. I forget if these are 10K or 30K sticks. I'm guessing they're 10K based off the uh, model number here, FJP10K. <laughs> um, so that should mean somewhere about halfway through the range of motion of the stick, uh, that should be dead center. But it could very well be that it's not exactly halfway through. Um, it goes by voltage, not resistance, but we'll just, we'll pretend it's resistance just for the sake of simplicity. Um, let's say it is a 10K stick. About halfway through the stick should be 5K. Let's say it's not perfect. None of them are. Halfway through the stick, actual center, when this thing is installed in the console, is like 5,050 or something. Um, you just set that value in the firmware, and then the controller's happy indefinitely until um, some chuckle fuck comes along and rips that hardware out. As far as I am aware, there is no way to correct that value on the controller itself. You can calibrate these things in Windows, uh, and Windows has dead zones built in these days. It wasn't always the case. Um, and it does work pretty well, but it's just not the same. If you're using this on an Xbox 360, I guess you're just shit out of luck. Clean up all this flux from sucking off those old sticks.
doesn't have to be perfect, but I want to... I, I know I'm not going to open this controller again in a very long time. I don't want to uh, be faced with the same mess. But I think we'll be good. Bend that back down. And I need to reinstall this bag. Just like that. Easy peasy. Should be good to go to reassemble this thing. Uh, so, let's go ahead and do that. Um, I really like my sticks. They are obviously not um, Xbox 360 sticks. Uh, they should fit no problem. Yeah. And they do, but I've got... Uh, these magnetic ones that I took out of that Xbox One controller a little while back, and oh, never mind. These don't fit at all. You can't, you can't actuate. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Okay, never mind. But I am gonna install these uh, other sticks I picked up because when you move. When you rotate the stick through its range of motion, the thing that stops it, you know, you can only go so far, is the actual stick itself hitting the housing, which normally is not a problem, but in my ignorance, I used 9.75 millimeter sticks, which is fine if your controller is designed for that, but technically this one is not. And these sticks are 9.5 millimeters. So that extra quarter of a millimeter um, does affect the range of motion on the controller itself. And so I wasn't getting the full full range. I think, I think it was calibrated such that it didn't actually matter, but um, I don't know. And I'd really like to not have to open this controller ever again, if possible. I doubt that's going to happen, but one can one can hope. Oh man, that's broken too. I believe I was allowed near electronics. Oh, balls. <laughs> seated. Now that feels seated too. I think we're good to go.
you know, looking at the sticks I just pulled out of this thing, I don't know if those were new old stock or if I pulled them from another controller or something, but I recall the aftermarket ones not having green potentiometers, but I don't recall. back on. Hey, still boots and connect. That's a good sign. I've got my four D pad buttons, four face buttons, two shoulder buttons, both my uh, triggers. Ooh, that does not center at all either. So this is this is part of where that calibration would be nice. I don't know if there's a way to calibrate this thing. Um, at least at the firmware level, um, software shouldn't be too bad. This this is fine. Like I think that's within the dead zone. Um, on Windows, which is how I'm gonna be using this thing anyway. And now look at that, my other stick works too. Ooh, that was not installed all the way. There we go. I don't know, it feels pretty good. It's working all right. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed about how it centers, but I guess it is what it is. Uh, let's try this. test the circularity. I kind of wish I had um, tested a before and an after on this, but wouldn't have really gotten any good data from the right stick. Uh, so this isn't too big of a deal. Average error 20%. If I recall correctly, that is a lot higher than stock, but it's also still within... Um, reasonable parameters. Uh, this controller should be stock. And as you can see, the error is a lot less at eight instead of 20. Oh, this one's, oh, there it goes, okay. I believe this one has stock sticks in it. Uh, and actually just looking through the plastic, I can tell that it doesn't have green potentiometers. It has dark gray ones. So then, yeah, these must have been aftermarket. Um, but I don't know, seems fine. Um, I'm disappointed with the amount of backlash in the mechanism for these older controllers. Um, Whereas this new stick has exceptionally minimal backlash. It is, it's solid. It, it genuinely feels good. I, I like it. Um, it is a shame that they're not centered and I don't know if there's a way to center them. The problem with those like aftermarket center your joystick potentiometer kit, blah, 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 is you lose range of motion. So if I tell my stick that this is centered just by, um, just by installing one of those solder in kits with the potentiometers, you, you, you tweak it until the stick is in the center, that's fine, but you lose range of motion. You see how much have to push the stick over to get it center, I'm, I mean, I guess it's really not all that much, uh, but it means that I have less, less precision, um, less range of motion, uh, because how that works, like I said earlier, um, these are 10K sticks, let's just assume the resistance is the range of motion, just for ease of explanation here. Um, 
let's say halfway through the stick, like I said, is 5,050. I can then set the upper limit to, I think it's 9,000 or 950. And so that extra last little bit of range, that extra 50 ohms of resistance, I'm not able to make use of. Um, that doesn't make that big of a difference if you can go over the edges, which I don't, I don't know if you can. Um, actually, you know what? You definitely can because you see this extra range of motion I have at the edges, how it's not actually registering a change, like it's already 100% and I've still got quite a bit of room here to maneuver. In the case of this controller, that would work. Um, it kind of doesn't feel good. Like there should be, this should be better calibrated. So let's, let's see if that's the sticks that I just installed or if that's just how these controllers work. No, that's just the stick that I have installed because on this one, I can put it right there. That is 100% on the gauge and then I've only got like half a millimeter more of travel. Oh, that one doesn't even go all the way up. It maxes out at 99% when it hits the edge. Mm. And same thing with the bottom. Oh, I can, I can get it by going quick. Yeah, so that's not, I really just want good aftermarket sticks. Why is this such a difficult problem to solve? This controller is gonna be totally usable, especially for what I'm gonna do with it. Um, this thing is gonna be my TV remote. I just, I put the keyboard on it and then I can use it to control my Netflix machine and it's great. Um, I'll link software if you're curious about that because for the longest time this did not work on PC, but it does now, but it requires specific software. I'll, I'll, I'll link that in the description. I think it's called a uh, console companion or something. It's on Steam. It's only a couple bucks. Works great though. Um, but yeah, so for my use case, it's going to be totally fine, um, especially because the stick is... Uh, <laughs> You know, I, if, if I set this thing down while it's on, I mean, it's not perfectly centered, but like I said, there is a dead zone built into Windows, so it should be good enough. Um, I'm not going to bother trying to fix up this controller because I'm, I'm really disappointed with the performance of these potentiometers. Actually, you know what? Let's test this one. Let's see how this one does. Can I do both at the same time? Should just work. Okay. It's paired to the receiver, but software doesn't like it unless it's player one. And yeah, this one still has the stock sticks in it. So you can see it does center, but there's so much slop in the mechanism like I've got I've got so much range of motion before the actual tension kicks in on both of them so how I would fix that I'd remove the sticks just the same and install this stick just the same but you pull the potentiometer off just clicks right off and then you take the old potentiometer, don't mix them up, X is X, Y is Y. You take the old potentiometer and you jam it on there and then you install it like that. Uh, sometimes you can kind of twist these out of the way so you don't even have to desolder them. I don't like that, especially because I have a tool that makes desoldering them really easy. But, you know, if that's what you need to do to get yours done, so be it. But 
that's how I would fix this silver one. In fact, I'm probably going to go do that just off camera now. Um, I didn't expect this to take, well, I did expect this to take 40 minutes, but I expected to get through at least two of the controllers before we hit the 40 minute mark. Um, but I don't, I don't want to keep you guys too long and it's literally the exact same process. Just, I don't have to work around some crappy mods that I've done. Um, I don't know. These are, these are perfectly good controllers. As far as I'm concerned, this is the best controller ever designed. Are there better controllers? Yes, but this one hits so many of the marks right out of the gate that like it's really hard to beat. If this controller had a Greek sandwich in it so you could do uh, motion controlled aiming, it would be literally perfect. Yeah, the D-pad kind of sucks, but uh, <laughs> if you're playing a platformer, like a 2D platformer that primarily uses the D-pad, there are better controllers for that anyway. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, yeah, it would be nice if the one controller can do it all. The, the D-pad is probably my biggest complaint. But otherwise, everything about it is just so good. You've got the modern button layout. Keep in mind, this, this was made in 2004. Well, not this specific one. This one was made in 2004. Um, you know, you've got the standard four button four face button layout. They're just labeled a little bit differently than some of the other controllers. Uh, Nintendo likes to swap these two and then Sony likes to make up their own stuff. You've got the uh, two menu buttons. Uh, you've got a standard D-pad, two sticks, two shoulder buttons, and then two triggers. Um, I prefer the triggers over buttons because you can just use them as buttons. Um, Dedicated buttons are better in games that only expect buttons, but it still works totally fine. I, I don't know. This is this is the best controller ever made as far as I'm concerned. And I mean, I have a half dozen of them. I'd like to keep them going if I can, especially my sentimental one. Um, this was one of the first soldering projects I ever did. I replaced the LEDs in this thing. And man, was that nerve wracking, but I think it came out all right. I don't know. That's that's all I've got. Um, this doesn't work on Android, unfortunately, but it does work on Windows conveniently. Anyway, I think that's about all I've got. I will save these sticks for future projects because mechanically they are fantastic. Um, electrically, not so much, but. As long as you've got your original potentiometers, that's much less of an issue. Um, yeah. It'd be nice to see some Hall effect potentiometers for, for something like this, just because um, these potentiometers do wear out over time. But in my experience, the mechanical properties of the stick itself, the 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 thing that makes the stick sticky stops sticking and um, that's when you get that backlash in the mechanism and it's, it's just overall a, a terrible experience. So I guess it's not that big of a deal as long as, as long as these are still available because the mechanical portion of this stick is actually really nice. I'm gonna enjoy using this. I will, um, I don't know, I'll update the video. I'll throw something in the description or pin a comment if my initial, my, my first impression turns out to not be representative of the long-term performance of the sticks, but I'm not going to, I'm not playing any games with this thing. I'm literally just using it as an input device for my TV because I can and because it's cool and because I don't have any issues with the wireless range and because I have so many of these things at this point. Um, that I'm otherwise not using, you know, whatever. Uh, links in the description, I will link to these sticks. I got them off of AliExpress, but in case my link is not working or you, you know how it is, um, there's like one OEM and then like a hundred different sellers. So just search FJP10K and you will find the sticks. But of course I will link to the one that I got. 
Uh, they come in three packs for whatever reason, which is fucking stupid, but I have three controllers and so six is good enough for what I need. Um, well, three controllers that I care to fix. Set that aside. And uh, I think that's about all I've got. Um, one final thing on closing. If you're looking at my battery mod going, wow, that's so cool, I'm gonna do that myself. Um, don't, it's dumb. It's bad practice. I mean, obviously mine has been fine because I've been using it for so long and there's clearly been no issues. But there, there's such a better way to do this, especially you don't wanna put the cell on top of the, the part that gets hot. These things put out a lot of heat. Um, it's, it's just silly. I've been fine, but I've been lucky. These things just, you, you get the battery caddies, you can buy these too. Uh, just don't drop them, they, they come apart really easily. But look, you, you just, you just take your rechargeable batteries, you slot them in there, and it just works, and it's great, and then you can just recharge these, and you get better battery life and a safer controller. So that's what I'd recommend. But if you insist, I guess I'm not gonna stop you, but I'm also not gonna assist you. So have fun. Thanks for watching. That's about all I've got. Um, like I said, links in the description. It's all right. Uh, I'll also link to that Xbox One controller video I did. Um, because even though those were Hall Effect sticks, I had literally the exact same problem with range of motion. You only get about 75% of the way and then it like tops out and then you've still got like three millimeters of motion where you're just not getting any extra input. Uh, so it totally destroys the precision of the controller. If you are a Xbox 360 Call of Duty fan, and you insist on fixing your controller with these sticks, and you notice that your aim kind of sucks afterwards, um, you can certainly blame the tools for that because the, you, you do genuinely get less precision out of this thing. You can make up for that by making these sticks significantly taller, um, but at some point it becomes, you know, a hassle to you know, move your move your thumb so much, and then and then you start doing the the claw grip nonsense, and it's just it's a slippery slope, man. I'm trying to look out for you, um. But anyway, I'm rambling, so I gotta get out of here. Um. Thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. Peace. All right. Quick addendum because I just got done swapping out this controller. Um. I pulled out the original sticks. As you can see, these were the originals, branded Alps and everything. Um, and then I went ahead and pulled the potentiometers off the sticks and then replaced them with the potentiometers on my uh, new sticks so that I can install the new sticks with the old potentiometers. That is the ideal way to do this, um, in, in theory. Um, though, spoiler alert, I have already tested it. It doesn't, it's, it's, it's all right. Let's, uh, let me show you what we've got. Um, as you can see, my sticks are centering better than they were, uh, but there's still enough annoying slop in the mechanism that, I mean, I'm not gonna be doing any serious gaming with this controller, but I like having the option. <laughs> um, but anyway. Yeah, there's a lot less slop in the right stick than there is in the left stick. Um, maybe they'll even out as it breaks in a little. Uh, but either way, it's it's fine, I guess. Uh, if you test the circularity, uh, you can see that it was is worse than it was stock, um, but it's still better than the other one using the new potentiometers. Uh, let's do both sticks and you can see my right stick is a little bit toiter, um, which I guess is ideal of, uh, if one stick had to be better than the other, I'd prefer the right stick being better. But anyway, it's, it's fine. Uh, the biggest difference compared to using just the full replacement potentiometers is the range of motion. So I have the stock sticks on here 
and you can see as I get that all the way over to the left, it hits 100%, and then I've got that same, you know, uh, about a millimeter worth of travel le left. Um, it feels like it's more than it was, but it's certainly significantly less than the other controller. Um, so you see the, the, the gauge hits 100%, and then there's still just, just a little bit of movement left. Um, yeah, same thing on both axes in both directions. Let's test the other stick. And once again, the exact same result. Except this one's even tighter. That one, uh, yeah, it's still, it's a little bit, just, just a little bit. Um, but it's nice, it works out. Um, it's better than using the included potentiometers by far, as long as your original potentiometers are still intact and, and working properly, which this one was, um, that's what you wanna do. Uh, though, of course, if you just have slop in the joysticks like I did on this controller, it's probably not worth breaking the thing open to replace because look at that. I've still got slop on the joysticks with a brand new module. Um, I imagine this second, this right joystick is going to break in with use and uh, get just as sloppy as the left one. Um, Probably only take a few hours to be honest um, but I don't know everything seems to be working fine um, all my buttons uh, all my triggers this left trigger is especially important to make sure it's working because this one had to be removed and reinstalled if you get the potentiometer um, angled on top of the board by accident you could impact your range of motion on the trigger uh, but uh, it looks like I did get that installed properly, or at least close enough that I'm getting the full range of motion. Uh, Max is out at 100% when fully depressed, and it's registering 0% when I'm not touching it. So, good enough for me. Um, yeah, I'll link this stuff down in the description. It's, it's alright. If you have mechanical damage to your stick, like, you know, you dropped your controller, it happened to land on the stick, and it just, like, totally totally messed it up, then um, this is a good way to go, but I guess if you've still got sloppy sticks, like I said, it's, it's probably not worthwhile. Um, the install went exactly like I said it would, uh, so what I did was I just removed the entire stick module. Uh, like I said, this is the original one. You can see the Alps branding there. Uh, and then I just pulled off the potentiometer. I made sure not to mix them up. I did one at a time. Uh, I pulled the, the potentiometer off by putting my thumb underneath it between the stick body and the potentiometer on the pins and then I kind of like hinged it up. So I pretend this top area right here is a hinge um, and then I just open it like a book, comes right off and then you can swap on the other potentiometer and it just works. Um, this first one that I just kind of ripped off uh, haphazardly on this stick I ended up breaking one of the tabs off, um, so it it helps to uh, go in there a little bit more gingerly and pay attention, and I have yet to break the tabs off by, by hinging this off from the bottom like that, uh, and it just works. And of course, like I said, uh, don't, don't mix up the left and right, uh, the, the X and Y potentiometers or the left and right potentiometers. Uh, you want each for each potentiometer in exactly the same place, um, almost as if you never removed them. I could probably, hmm, actually on that note, this left stick, I don't know that I can clean up the slop because it's just kind of all over the center. Um, I just got to live with that, I guess. Uh, but this right stick, there's almost no slop, but it's just not centering. This one I could probably fix by just pulling this thing apart again, and then physically tilting the entire stick assembly. Um, I think that should, that should help, but, oh, actually, no, I, I don't know if that'll help. 
I'd have to tilt just the um, potentiometer. So I'd have to pull it apart, desolder just the potentiometer, and then just kind of like, just tweak it ever so slightly. Um, and then maybe I can get that cleaned up, but it's, I believe it's within tolerance. It's um, on the X direction, it's between zero and 2% off center. And in the Y direction, ooh, it's actually kind of a lot. Uh, it's about 12% off center. Uh, I think that's just barely outside the, the default Windows dead zone, but it's fine. I'm not too worried about it. Realistically, I'm not actually going to use this thing, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, but either way, I just wanted to give you guys the, guys the results. Um, I don't know. I really like these controllers. I especially like uh, being able to repair and keep using them instead of having to buy new controllers every few years. Um, that seems a lot less wasteful. And, you know, like, like, like I said, the, these controllers hold a special place in my heart. Um, the other one specifically is sentimental. And then this one's just, oh my God, it feels so much better than the other one that I've been in and out of a hundred times and got the screw posts all messed up. I, I abused that controller for years, um, and I did not treat it properly when I was repairing it, but I know better now. Um, it is what it is. The damage is already done. Um, that's why I have this one too. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, I'll link the sticks in the description if you have a 360 controller you want to try your hand at repairing. Um, Uh-oh. I don't know why I have extras. Um, I might have installed the wrong stick. So that says RSF, that says RSF, that says Alps, and then this one says RSF. Oops. And this is clearly brand new. There's no solder on any of those pins. I think I just pulled the stick out and then reinstalled it. I don't know which one's which. I'm guessing it's the left one because that's the one with slop in it. I have no idea how I did that. Um, interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll play more with that. But anyway, links in the description. These things are relatively cheap. Hopefully they don't disappear anytime soon, or if they do, better ones take their place. They're all right. Um, still not as good as OEM, but we can't get the OEM Alp sticks anymore, so it is what it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. Peace. See, chada, it just works. Kind of great. Can you uh, can uh, type out quick things with the keyboard too? Mm -hmm. Ta da!